Um, so the pancreas is an endocrine organ. It's not just endocrine though, but also is gonna have exocrine function. So it could secretes digestive enzymes. So we will come back to the pancreas when we get to the digestive system. In this video, I'm just gonna talk about its endocrine function. So producing hormones, which travel of course in the bloodstream because that's what hormones do. Um, and we'll talk about the two hormones, insulin and glucagon that are produced by the pancreas. First, I wanna back up and kind of give you a big picture of why this is important. So what I want you to do is try to graph for yourself um, the typical range of blood glucose levels. Um, so over a day for an individual who has three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. How do you do this? Well, you know what average is maybe? I can tell you, um, typical blood glucose average is about 90 um, milligrams per deciliter. So just do your best. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do this as well. I've got an X axis, which is going to be time, right? Y axis is going to be what? Blood glucose. Blood glucose is a regulated variable. We need to maintain it within homeostatic ranges so that our body can function, especially our brain. Our brain relies on um, glucose only, cannot process, break down fats like the rest of our body can. So we've got 90 here. I'm not even gonna write any other numbers on this axis because I mean, you don't know them. Why, let's not really deal with them, at least right now. Now let's make this a nice orange, why not? Um, so we're gonna have three meals. So we've got resting glucose, kind of average. Um, actually, I'm sorry, it's gonna start, let's start low. When you wake up in the morning, um, you have breakfast to break your fast and glucose is gonna go up and down and up and down and up and down. Not perfect lines. Um, so this is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you do not need to know this, but these are gonna go up. I mean, depending on the individual, about 120 up here, maybe um, 60 just below that line there. So blood glucose is um, fluctuating between 60 and 120 during the day um, as we eat food. And this range is fine. Um, but something needs to maintain this, right? So something is, is gonna help us um, deal with this food as it comes in and maintain blood sugar, first of all, above 60, even when we haven't eaten and below 120, even when we've just eaten like a liter of cola. So what does that? What's, what maintains that? Well, you may have guessed the pancreas. Here is the pancreas. So the pancreas is located um, adjacent to the um, small intestine right here. So this is the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. So we'll see the pancreas again and we'll see it in the rat to see where it is. It's actually really small in the rat, it's hard to see. Um, and you'll kind of be able to see where it is, but it's kind of behind stuff. <laughs> it's pretty small. Okay, but the main point is it's connected to the small intestine because we're gonna see that when we talk about digestive enzymes being released to facilitate digestion in the small intestine. Right now, we're actually gonna be talking about the hormones that are produced to be secreted into the bloodstream, right? So we don't really care about this connection to the intestine right now. We care about hormones that are being produced that are gonna go into the blood, blood, yeah. Um, and within this pancreatic tissue organ, there's different types of cells. These pancreatic islets that you will see in lab, this is where the hormones are produced. The rest of this stuff out here, this is going to be our digestive enzymes that we'll come back to. That's that exocrine function that you actually see there. And the alpha and beta cells are where um, hormones are produced. The, 
glucagon, and insulin, which I'll get to each of those functions. So alpha cells are going to produce glucagon and beta cells are going to produce insulin. And these together are going to maintain blood glucose in its normal range. So let's go through each of these separately. Let's start with the stimulus being high blood glucose, which is going to target insulin. This is going to be a response to high blood glucose. It's going to lower glucose. Glucagon, so I'm going to label that here, is going to respond to low glucose and it's going to act to raise glucose. And I remember this because glucagon, it makes the glucose gone from your, um, from your, like your liver. Because, um, well, why don't we look at that? It, it's going to convert glycogen to glucose. It makes that glucose gone. It doesn't really work, but it works for me. Let's do response of the pancreas to high blood glucose. So our stimulus is going to be, well, first of all, you're gonna eat a meal, right? So eat food. And that is going to increase blood glucose. Now, what's kind of cool is there's actually two different pathways for this to be detected. One is what I'm going to start with, is that is detected directly by the pancreas. So if I were to get a different color here and label my stuff, this is our stimulus. This is our receptor. We're going to need an integrator, actually. Integrator is the same here. Isn't that nice? Simple. Remember, sometimes it is for endocrine organs. The receptor and the integrator are the same thing. We're going to have output signal. And we're going to then have a target or effector and a response. And you could do this, right? Like you don't even have to know the function of stuff. I guess you have to know which one responds. So the output signal for the pancreas is um, in, in response to high blood glucose is going to be insulin. That's why someone needs an insulin shot. If they don't produce enough insulin, their blood sugar is going to spike too high after a meal. They don't have insulin. Insulin is going to target the target tissues. Let's put that um, things like the liver and actually just all cells because it's going to stimulate glucose uptake in the cells. So glucose uptake, meaning that glucose is going to go into the cells. It was in the blood. It's going to go into the cells. That's going to result in lowered blood glucose. So insulin is going to facilitate cells taking in glucose. The liver is going to make glycogen from that glucose so that glucose is no longer in the blood. Um, kind of cool. I'm just going to tell you, when you eat food, there's also stretch receptors, right, that are mechanoreceptors that detect stretch. And this actually carries information to the CNS that also signals the pancreas. So it's kind of a side note, just kind of cool. Um, so this would be a um, oh, humoral stimulus here is the main stimulus for blood glucose regulation. This would be a neural stimulus. The negative feedback here is the decrease in blood glucose concentration, which then turns off this reflex. That thereby ends the release of insulin. 
Okay. So when is I haven't had enough learning checks, so here's one. So what triggers the release of glucagon and draw the pathway for the stimulus and then the response of that, just like we just did with insulin. I'm not gonna draw this all out for you. Um, we're gonna hopefully have time to do this in class as well, but I'm just gonna write a few notes for this. Um, glucagon, glucagon is going to act when blood sugar is low. So in response to low blood sugar, I'll get my writer back here, come on. Do I have it? Yes. Okay, um, response to low. Low blood glucose. You already have your stimulus then. It's gonna trigger um, the alpha cells in the pancreas, in those pancreatic islets. And then you should be able to write out the um, pathway for this and the targets that are gonna result in increased blood glucose as a response. Okay, this picture is kind of nice. Just wanted to give it to you. This is the two different um, stimuli, so high blood glucose. And then what I like about this picture is we're seeing glucose uptake by the cells in response to high blood glucose. It's actually gonna go from the blood. Here's the blood going by. Into those cells. It's also going to be converted to glycogen. This is the one that you should hopefully just drew the stimulus is low blood glucose. That's going to stimulate glycogen breakdown. So glycogen becomes glucose. Glycogen is stored in the liver as well as actually the skeletal muscles to cause glucose to go back to normal range. 